First of all, thank you, Bill. I bring greetings to His Holiness the Dalai Lama with deep respect and affection from all of the wonderful and good-hearted people of Chicago. On behalf of the Theosophical Society in America, I would like to welcome you all here to today's event. It is a few words I would like to say about the Theosophical Society. First of all, it was founded in 1875, and it has its international headquarters in Chennai, India. Its American headquarters are right here in Wheaton, Illinois. Since its founding, it has had as its focus, the unity of all life, an open-minded inquiry into the world's religions, science, and philosophy, and a view to the need and the possibilities for spiritual self-unfoldment. The seed for today's program was planted many years ago actually in 1956. In his most recent book, Toward a True Kinship of Faiths, His Holiness speaks about a visit that he made to the international headquarters of the Theosophical Society in Chennai. At that time, it was, except for a first one trip that he had made outside of Tibet to communist China in an attempt to negotiate with Mao Zedong and other Chinese leaders. Except for that one trip, it was the first time that he had ever left Tibet. He was a young monk, 21 years old, whose only religious exposure at that time was to Buddhism. In his book, he speaks about it, and I'd like to read you what it is that he actually said. He said, looking back on this trip in 1956, I realized that my visit to the Theosophical Society in Chennai left a powerful impression. There, I was first directly exposed to people and to a movement that attempted to bring together the wisdom of the world's spiritual traditions, as well as science. I felt among the members a tremendous openness to the world's religions and an embracing of pluralism. He goes on to say that when he returned from that trip, he was a changed man. Three years later, in 1959, His Holiness and 100,000 of his fellow Tibetans left Tibet fleeing Tibet from the occupation and living in Dharamsala, India, in exile. During the five decades since he first became a refugee from his homeland, His Holiness has continually advocated for a peaceful resolution to the occupation of Tibet and for basic human rights for the Tibetan people. His efforts have earned him numerous awards, among which are the Nobel Peace Prize and the U.S. Congressional Gold Medal, which is the highest civilian award in the United States. During his time in exile, he has met with countless political leaders, business and religious leaders, and with countless people just like you and me. He is, without question, one of the greatest people on the world stage today. It is a greatness that has been earned by his profound humility and by his constant focus on those qualities that make us all truly human. Compassion, kindness, 
and our shared desire for happiness. In these times where religious-based violence and turmoil seem to be so prevalent, his message of religious understanding and of mutual respect have a great resonance. Exclusivism and mere passive toleration are no longer viable options in today's world. I would like to invite you all now to listen to His Holiness's message about another way of being, a way to bridge the faith divides. I ask you now to please join me in welcoming His Holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama of Tibet, Tenzin Gyatso. Thank you. Thank you. Really beautiful decoration. Really beautiful. Thank you. Uh, dear brothers and sisters, I'm extremely happy to be here once more in Chicago, uh, having opportunity meeting with people and to share some of my as a day, thoughts or my own experience. So now this time, uh, the Theosophical Society, uh, they invited me, uh, and the Theosophical Society, since in 50s, uh, actually 56, when I came to India. 1956. Uh, 1956. 1956. The, in South India, the Theosophical Society headquarters in South India. So their spirit respects all religions. Uh, and in order to develop respect, you see, in their sort of place, the small temple of all major religious tradition, they, they built small one. Worship here, places. Here. Huh? Worship places. Worship places. So they actually, people get some experience and some knowledge about different traditions. So that's the proper way to develop uh, mutual respect and also mutual learning. So wonderful. So now, uh, 